Hi guys. Um, I'm going to try to hurry through this one because I want it to all fit in one video. Um, but I need to tell about the dream and then later what happened, um, what's happened since then. So about 15 months ago, um, we had, we, the house we were living in, we had lived in for 16 years. And I had a dream that we were moving. And I was packing up the the rest of what was in my kitchen. And then the, in the next scene, I'm in the backyard with um, this older skinny man. Um, I didn't know who it was, but I, I kept saying, it's not ready yet because <laughs> we have 16 years worth of drunk in our basement. Really, it was, it was probably the most embarrassing thing. Um, and I was telling him that, you know, I wasn't ready. I couldn't leave yet because it was, it was such a mess down there. I didn't want anybody to, to see it or have to deal with it or anything. <clears throat> and then he said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. The next scene, I'm standing on a long uh, wooden pier over some deep water on both sides. And it's a very low to the water pier. It's kind of scary. But right in, I'm walking down this pier, and right in front of me, I see a man. And I'm going to say I, it was probably Jesus. I just feel like it was. I didn't see his face. I just saw, like, the upper chest portion. And there were some other people to the right. I don't know if they were people or angels, but they were showing me this. Okay, I was worried about walking over the water, and they were showing me this material they folded this material out from a like a bolt of fabric and it looked like um, lacy fabric like you would see on a wedding dress or or something like that and it just looked like normal material but the words he said were <clears throat> this this um a, a bullet could come at you 100 miles an hour and if you're wearing this you won't be hurt and so um, they wrapped it around me, and I started walking. And the next scene, I'm with some other people in a shopping mall. And there are a few of us in uh, gowns or robes like that, that have that kind of uh, fabric, lacy fabric. And around us, um, people are laughing at us, snickering, whispering. And I also see some other everybody's in normal clothes except us and those lacy things and there are some other people in um, gowns that look like that but they're they were just solid uh, cream color fabric and so I, I walk back toward the pier and there's some benches on the pier next to this dock in the water and there's some people sleeping there in those in the solid color cream color gowns not not the lacy ones but the solid ones and when I turn around I see the uh, an old dory boat like a really old boat with benches in it and there's several people sitting in them they have on gowns too but they're gray and there was an older man in the front an older woman in the front a child in the back and I believe one other, one other adult or teenager. <clears throat> and the things that they were doing, one looked like he was preaching. One, the lady looked like she was praying. Uh, the child was just in the back playing with something. And I was standing there looking at them, and they couldn't see me. They, they seemed to be unaware of anything going on around them. Um... And they were, like I said, they were in the dory, in the water, ready to depart. So, from from that dream, I think it means, um, you know, that the we're considered the bride of Christ, those who have put their faith and trust in Christ, and what He did on the cross. That we are, um, the it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. To me, those people who were in the dory seem to be doing things that show what their life was about, what they did while they were alive. 
I, I tend to think that the cream color, solid color fabric are the ones who maybe thought they were safe but weren't. Um, it reminds me of the verse in Matthew seven twenty one to 23. Um, Jesus said, On that day many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then he, I will declare to him, Depart from me, I never knew you. So it's, it's about the relationship. It's about the total faith, not, not in what we can do, but putting, the, putting our total faith in him. Hold on. <clears throat> so that was the dream. I want to go to what's happened since then. My, my husband's job changed. That in itself is a whole other amazing story that I, don't, I can't go into right now. But about a year late, well, we moved two or three months after that, that happened. But it was kind of a quick move. We have, like I said before, we have um, eight kids, seven that are still in the home. And they're all 10 and under. So it, it was a big deal to move even just what we had to have right then. And it's been a long it's been a long year of adjustment. He worked a lot of hours at this new job. Um, make a long story short, he changed jobs right before this next thing that I'm getting ready to tell about. He worked at the first one for about a year and changed jobs. And as soon as he changed at the previous job, they'd done away with all those positions. So it was totally God's timing and just a long story of how he got us here. But... After being here about a year, um, we traveled back and forth to do as much as possible at the other house. But, again, there there was 16 years worth of junk in our basement. And I was just very stressed over what are we going to do with all of it? How am I ever even going to find the time to deal with it? And plus there was stuff upstairs. <clears throat> so... Uh, you know, I remember being out on the porch one day just praying, Lord, how am I going to do this? I'm not, I don't have the power to keep up with seven kids and do all the ordinary daily stuff that we need. And then in addition to that, take care of the other house and try to put it on the market. I, I don't, I can't do it all. And we made a trip back to the house shortly after that. And we saw, as soon as we walked in the door, we saw black stuff hanging from the ceiling on the walls. My first thought was mold, and I just told everybody to get back in the van, and we left. I called the insurance company to see if they covered mold damage because we did forget to leave the dehumidifier running, and I thought maybe that was the problem. Well, we thought it was mold, so we, we came back to the current house. We bought... Uh, dehumidifiers and everything and about a week later we drove back down there on the way down there my van breaks down which made me call my dad <clears throat> and in the in the meantime I'm going through this thing where I want to be thankful and everything and I remember you know I don't understand but thank you for the mold you know <laughs> whatever happens thank you for this you know trial and when we were going back, the van broke down, and the first thing I told the kids was, you know, we don't understand what's going on, but we just need to say thank you for, for the van breaking down. And they probably think I'm crazy, and that's okay. Anyway, that made me call my dad, who's a mechanic. And they also sell houses. <laughs> and when I, I told him the problem with the van, he talked me through how to check what was wrong with it. And because the check engine light kept coming on. So he told me how to check it. We did get it going again, and we went on to the house. On the way to the house, I'm talking to him on the phone, and they told me to check to see if it was oil and not mold. And I said, well, it can't be, it can't be oil. We don't have anything that, that runs on oil. We got back to the house, and sure enough, I touched some of it with my fingers and it was oily. What had happened was we had a furnace in the basement. Keep remembering basement. The basement that had 
we quit using it 13 years ago when we got an electric heat pump. And since that time, um, you know, we turned it down. We turned the thermostat down, and I guess we never turned it off all the way at the at the breaker. And when we left a few several months ago, when it was getting ready to be winter time, we turned it down the electric heat pump down to 50, so that the pipes wouldn't freeze. Well, that's also the temperature that the oil furnace thermostat was set at. So when when it got as cold as 50 or below, they were competing back and forth, and it blew this nasty oily junk everywhere, all it, all over the basement. Um, and by the way, since that time, my check engine light never even came on again. <laughs> but um, I called the insurance company and said, I think it might be oil. They had someone come look at it. 95% um, of the things in our house were, were ruined. The cleaning company came in and um, disposed of anything that was ruined, cleaned up anything that was um, that, that they could salvage, you know, and when they returned it, they even asked if we wanted it returned there or here to this house. And, I mean, that, that was a blessing in disguise. It's amazing how God just took care of all of that. All I did was ask for help. And in addition to that, um, at the same time this this happened and I started getting all these phone calls and what to do with uh, which person I was supposed to talk to about contents, which person I was supposed to talk to about the dwelling, the cleaning service, all those things. All those calls started coming in and I had all that going. And then my husband had to go in the hospital for emergency surgery. And he wasn't going to be able to lift anything for a good two months. And I was I was very stressed out. I was out to, to lunch with my mom and my oldest daughter. And I get a phone call from the insurance company that tells me that the man from the service company is going to be calling you. He's an old slender gentleman, and his name is Jesse. Um, I got the um, excuse me. I got that phone call uh, a couple weeks, or a couple days before that. Then I'm sitting in the restaurant, and this guy Jesse calls from the cleaning company. By the way, Jesse means the name Jesse means gift or God's gift. And this man Jesse on the phone, uh, we get into a discussion about my contents and things, and he says, no matter what condition your house is in, no matter what condition your things are in. If they were yours, they belong to you. And I said, but you don't understand. That basement is full of 16 years of, I'm going to put this here just for now. I said, that is 16 years worth of for now all over the place. And he said, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Just like in the dream. Just like in the dream, it was about the basement. Real life, it's about the basement. And it's all about God. And it's all about letting us know He is on the way. Because when I left that house in the dream, He told me not to worry about it. What was the next thing? The next thing was the protection. The, the different colored gowns. And as I end this, I just, um, I just ask you to, to check yourself and see what color you're wearing. Are you wearing lace? Are you ready to go? Do you belong to him? Are you trying to earn your way, thinking you're going? And we never know when we are going to be the dead in Christ. We don't, we're not promised tomorrow. So I would just say, please be ready. Know who you belong to. God bless.